All right, we're in section 8.3 today using intercepts, page 398 in our textbooks. Um, before we get started, I want you to write down a few uh, pieces of information that are going to help you uh, in understanding this, this section. The first one, the first point is how many, um, how many points do you need to graph a linear equation? Two. Two. Yesterday, how many points did you graph? You graphed five, okay? So technically, you only need two in order to determine the, the direction of the line, all right? Now, the second point that you need to understand is the x-intercept x is the point where the line crosses which axis? The x-axis, all right? So here's what it's saying. If the line crosses the x-axis on an x value of four, the x-intercept is four. Same thing goes with the y-intercept. Uh, the y-intercept is the point where the line crosses the y-axis. All right. Now, the last point involves actually solving or finding the intercepts, and we find them by substituting what value? Substituting a value of 0 for the variable you are not solving for. So if you're trying to find the x-intercept, you substitute 0 for y. If you're trying to find the y-intercept, you substitute 0 for x, okay, for the variable you are not solving for. Okay, so in example 1, I'm going to find the x and y intercept um, for both of these equations, but we're going to start with the first equation. All right, so if I want to find the x-intercept using the rule we just wrote down, I'm going to substitute what value for y? Zero. Zero. And then I'm going to solve, okay? So that makes this term completely cancel out, right? All right, and what am I left with? 3x equals 6. How do I solve for x? Divide, by three. Divide both sides by 3. My x-intercept is 2. Okay, now I'm going to take the same equation, but since I'm solving for y now, what do I substitute for x? Zero. I substitute zero for the variable I'm not solving for. So now, three times zero minus two y equals six. This cancels. I'm left with negative two y equals six. Divide both sides by what? Negative two. And y equals what? Negative three. Y equals negative three. And now I've found my x and my y intercept. Okay? All right, I want you to do the same thing for the second problem. I want you to find the x and the y intercept. All right, so when I'm solving for x, what do I substitute for y? Zero. Zero. I probably need to move this over a little bit more. All right, 4x plus 5 times 0 equals negative 20. All right, so 4x equals negative 20. Divide both sides by 4. x equals negative 5. All right, now 4 times 0 plus 5y equals negative 20. All right, now 5y equals negative 20. Divide both sides by 5, and y equals negative 4. Okay, so that's it for example one. We found our xy-intercept for the first problem, then our y-intercept and x-intercept for the second problem. Now we're going to go over to our graph paper, and we are going to graph these two um, equations using the x and y-intercept. So I want you to set up two graphs on your graph paper. Okay, so now we're ready to graph. So what were our x and y-intercepts for the first problem? x equals 2 and y equals negative 3. So we're going to plot the point on an x value of 2 and a y value of negative 3. And we're going to draw our line straight through the points. Then we're going to write the equation 3x minus 2y equals 6 on the graph and we're done. 3x minus 2y equals 6 and we've graphed that equation. That's it. 
All right, so plot the point on the x-intercept, the y-intercept, draw the line, write the equation, and you're done. All right, now I want you to go ahead and graph the second one that we solved. Go ahead and graph the second one that we solved by plotting your x and y-intercepts, draw your line, and then label your equation on the graph. Okay, so what was my x-intercept? Negative 5. What was my y-intercept? Negative 4, right? X was negative 5, Y was negative 4. Okay, so then we draw a line straight through the points. And what's the last thing we do? All right, just somewhere on the graph, 4X plus 5Y equals negative 20. All right, and we're done. Okay, so that's pretty much. Now, your homework questions tonight on your quiz and your test, this is the type of question you're going to see. Find the x and the y-intercept and then graph the equation. Now, we do need to go over one more example, which is example three. Uh, this is a canoeing example. They're basically just going to give us a word problem. We have to set up our equation, and then we find our x and y-intercepts just like we have been doing. All right, so it says you're canoeing along a 12-mile stretch of river. You travel four, four miles per hour when paddling and two miles per hour when drifting. Write and graph an equation and describe your possible paddling and drifting times for the trip. Um, okay, so what, they, what I will give you, okay, I'll make sure that it's clarified which one's going to be your x value and which one's going to be your y value. All right, now we just need to set up an equation. We know that the 12 mile stretch of river is going to be our total. Okay, so 12 is going to be our total. And we know that 4 miles per hour, but I don't know how many hours, plus 2 miles per hour, but I don't know how many hours, equals 12. So there's my equation. Now I want you to go ahead and find what your x and y intercepts would be. What would your x intercept be? What would your y intercept be? and then uh, we'll look at it. All right, so when we're solving for x, what do we substitute for y? Zero. 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 When we're solving for y, what do we substitute for x? Zero. So 4 times 0 plus 2y equals 12. So 2y equals 12 for y. Divide both sides by 2. And y equals 6. 4x equals 12, divide both sides by 4, and x equals 3. All right, so there we have it. We've got our x and our y-intercept, and then we just graph it if it asks us to, or we just leave it at that. All right, it does ask us to give three possible combinations of paddling and drifting times. Uh, basically, we have two of them right there. If our y-value is 6, what's our x-value going to be? Yeah, now our x value is going to be 0. So we're going to have one point that's up at 0, 6. We'll have another point. What was our x intercept? 3? Three. At 3, 0. Okay, and then when we graph it, we basically just pick another ordered pair that the line passes through once we graph the line. All right, they picked, um, I think, 2, 2 because it, it passed straight through point two two when they graphed the line. All right, so if you understand that, that's pretty much everything you need to know for Lesson 8.3.